I want to welcome each one of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, for our weekly Bible study. This is the 10th Sabbath School lesson study. I welcome you. By God's grace, we stepped into this third month, month of March. Already almost one week is uh, rolled away from our lives. Each one of us, the moment uh, we remember month of March, the moment the sound comes to our hearing, March. So much of a fear grips our mind because it was last year, this month, and most of the places in India went into lockdown. And everything, what we cherished and what we enjoyed, completely taken away. We are not able to recover from the devastation caused by coronavirus. Even that worrying news, frightening news, is again gripping us that many parts of this state, Maharashtra, and other states also, there is alarming rising of COVID virus. That brings so much of a concern to each one of us. But God, in His infinite love and wisdom, showed us mercy, special grace to us and our families and our congregations. So we lean on God, even though another lockdown may knock at our door. This is what is happening. So let's pause for prayer so that God will take care of us and lead us to live as his sons and daughters, realizing and recognizing that supreme sacrifice which Jesus made for us in order that each one of us can be saved, those who trust in him. Let's pause for prayer. Loving Father, we want to thank you so much for your son Jesus and his sacrifice, because of which we could come to your throne of grace boldly, calling you as our Father. Accept each one of us. Thank you for being with us throughout one year of suffering, so much of anxiety, so much of fear in the minds of each one of us in India and around the world because of coronavirus. God, your special grace and your mercy did not leave us in spite of this suffering. Again, Lord, the news is spreading around that there may be another lockdown in the near future. Lord, whatever comes, let your mercy and peace be with us so that we can be safe and we can still live as your sons and daughters amidst of suffering around us. Thank you, Lord. Speak to us because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. I want to bring to your uh, attention my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lesson 10, the title is Doing the Unthinkable. The title is uh, Good but Uncertain. Not really focusing on what we are studying this week. Unthinkable. Maybe I can say Unthinkable Supreme Sacrifice. We can't even imagine unimaginable supreme sacrifice which Jesus has made. That is the focus of our lesson. This week we are going to learn from Isaiah chapter 50, 51, 52, 53. Four chapters. Isaiah chapter 50, 51, 52, 53 chapters. In these four chapters, we have that supreme sacrifice. We could not comprehend why God has made such a supreme sacrifice. Unthinkable. Doing the unthinkable. 
Sometimes we may say, if some good person falls into a temptation and sin, then we may say, oh, he did an unthinkable act. Unthinkable sin. We never Im imagined. We never expected such a worst thing to come from him. Sometimes we say about some people. But this is doing unthinkable, which means beyond our imagination. How God the Son made such a supreme sacrifice in order to save us. Our memory text is found in Isaiah 53 verse 5. A very, very familiar passage to each one of us. Isaiah 53. As each one of us know, Isaiah wrote these prophecies at least 700 years in advance. 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. But when Jesus was born 700 years later, and you apply these two chapters, especially chapter 52, verse 13 onwards, up to the end of chapter 53, if you apply all of that one to Jesus and his suffering, this cannot apply to any other person. You try to fit into any other person in the world, whether this prophecy or these words in this prophecy, Isaiah 52, verse 13 onwards till the end of Isaiah 53. That it cannot fit anyone. Only it applies to Jesus when he was on this earth. That's why the Jewish commentators, Jewish commentators who read this one, gave a commentary, they missed the main focus of this prophecy. That's why, who did that, doing that unthinkable? Only God the Son. And with that little uh, introduction, we want to read, we want to read that uh, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. Shall we read that one? Is there someone who can help us? But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, I want you to notice that one. He was wounded for what? For our transgressions. What is that another word for transgression? That is sin. And also, he was bruised <coughs> for our iniquity. Again, another word for sin is iniquity. That's why this is a, a parallelism, emphasizing the same thing. He was beaten, he was wounded because of our sins. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And also, by his stripes, by the stripes which he received, we are healed. That is spiritual as well as physical healing. We'll focus more on that one as we proceed into this uh, lesson study. An illustration is given, not a made-up story, but a, a true account of a Chinese Christian. His name was uh, Lo. He was a Christian in China, but he noticed some of the Chinese people were working as slaves in the mines in Africa. He wanted to share the gospel. He wanted to tell about Jesus to them. but. There is no way to share the gospel message with them. So in order to share the gospel message with them, he sold himself also as a slave. A slave had to work whole day. Should wake up early in the morning, work the whole day. They gave only some just a little food, ordinary food, not any special food, not any food which they like. But they have to work whole day. And knowingly, the suffering and the hardship of the slaves, he was, he became a slave. He sold himself as a slave for five years. And he worked with them whole day because he chose only the way I can be with them. I can associate with them. I can identify with them. I can also share with them this gospel. 
of Jesus. So while working with them whole day, he was telling about Jesus. Amazing! How can a free person, a person who was not so poor, middle class family, yet just to share the gospel, he went up to the extent of becoming a slave, working hard, whole day, months and years together. By the time he died, this man was able to bring to Christ 100 people as converts. Before that, they did not know who Jesus was. Because of his testimony, because of his uh, gospel sharing, 100 people. How many people who did not express outwardly that he was Christian or she was Christian, but must have become a secret followers of Jesus. But 100 people came openly to accept Christ as their personal savior. Can you imagine? Doing unthinkable. Doing unthinkable. We need to learn that spiritual lesson also. If somebody says, come let's go and visit some family and give a Bible study, or let's go and pray for a family who is going through some sickness and suffering. Often, we take some excuse and say, oh, I have some other work. I don't want to come now. Uh, I have some other appointment. Uh, we don't want to go. We are thinking only going to church, giving some tithe and offering, that is enough. Though it is good, but we need to do much more to share this gospel. In order to share the gospel with those slaves, he went down to their level, became a slave. Now, think of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. Though he is God, he is the creator, he is the sustainer, he is the redeemer, he is the king of kings and lord of lords. And he sits on the throne in heaven. Angels always say, holy, holy, holy. Such a God, God the Son, who came to this world and took the form of what? Philippians chapter 2 verse 7. He took the form of a servant and accepted the death or took upon himself the death on the cross in order to save us. In order to save us. Jesus did all of this one just to save each one of us. Let's come to Isaiah chapter 50 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 50 uh, chapter 5 0 verse 6. It says, I gave my back to be beaten. When uh, they were beating him, he, they whipped him 39 times. And the Roman whip contained sharp iron nails. The moment they hit that one on the back of any person, the sharp iron nails stuck into the flesh of the back. And when they took it out to whip a second time, it tore some of the flesh and pulled out some of the flesh of the person. 39. It says, I gave my back to be beaten. I gave my cheek to those that pluck the hairs. That means they pull his beard. And also it says, he did, uh, I did not hide my face from shame and spitting as part of putting him to shame at the cross. They scolded him. They were spitting on him. This is what is the prophecy which accurately fulfilled 700 years later. Jesus, the Son of God, King of kings and Lord of lords, the creator of this universe, they insulted him, attacked him. But Christ did not retaliate, or his Father did not retaliate from heaven. And Jesus said one word, all of you become dust, they would have turned to dust. or had he cursed them by saying, Tigers and lions, 
come and eat these wicked people. Tigers and lions would have appeared and eaten those people. Because he said, let there be light, light came. Let there be dry land, dry land uh, now appeared. His word has so much power. He did not retaliate to curse them. He did not retaliate. Nor his father, seeing the suffering of his son. Normally, naturally, if the son is being beaten, if the son is being persecuted, what does the father do? Father reacts and he goes beyond his uh, ability to fight back, to rescue his son. But here, God the Father did not retaliate. Both kept silent. And we are told that suffering servant, Isaiah 52, 13 onwards till the end of chapter 53. I want you to read this chapter 52 verses 13 onwards up to the end of chapter 30, 53, 52 and 53. You read through a few times and try to capture the seriousness and the sacrifice which Jesus has made for each one of us. This is called a suffering saint poem. Suffering saint, or like a song about the suffering saint. Who is that suffering saint? Spoken in this uh, Isaiah chapter 53 is none other than Jesus. And it is Isaiah who introduced to us in chapter 7, verse 14, Isaiah 7 14, about the birth. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, his name shall be called Emmanuel. That is about his birth and also his uh, kingly status. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 which talks about his kingship, is the everlasting father. The government of God is upon his shoulder, is the prince of peace. It talks about his uh, origin. In Isaiah chapter 53, it talks about his suffering and that supreme sacrifice, his death, in order to give us salvation. Amazing. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2 and 3. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2 and 3. Jesus, when he was on this earth, in the form of a human being, in his incarnation, is compared as a tender plant. When the tender plant is growing, tender leaves, and if the hot sun comes, they dry up. When little strong wind comes, the tender plant bends and breaks because it's so tender. But the roots are going into the dry ground. When gr ground is dry, it's very hard. Sometimes even to dig, we find it hard. But into such a dry ground, the roots are slowly penetrating. It's hard. Likewise, the life of Jesus on this earth, the life of Jesus on this earth, was so hard, so tough. Whole day he had to work as a carpenter when he was a teenager. While the other teenagers must be roaming around and playing around. and in... But Jesus was working. So he had tough time, like a tender plant. And verse 3, 53 verse 3, Isaiah 53 verse 3, it says, There's no form, no comeliness to look upon. That means... Not that Jesus was a, an ugly person, not at all. Because of his suffering on the cross, because the crown of thorns, which they put on his uh, head and they beat him on that crown of thorns. The sharp and strong thorns stuck into his skull and the blood was oozing out. His whole face was covered with the blood. That's why his uh, now face, his face was marred. That's why it says in verse 3, no form, no comeliness to look upon him because his face was covered with the drops of blood. Isaiah 53 verse 4 tells about his suffering for our punishment. 
on behalf of each one of us he took the punishment he took the punishment for our sins he bore our griefs and our sorrows we are supposed to suffer that painful suffering on the cross but jesus took that suffering upon himself in order to save us and uh, each one of us know the death punishment on the cross is the most cruel most painful and most shameful one the historical records tell us some people who were crucified because of their crime they were hanging on the cross for 5 or 6 days suffering with so much pain no human language can adequately describe the pain and the suffering and the shame of cross and the families who had somebody crucified in their family because of maybe theft or murder under the roman rule they felt so much ashamed and those people that family was treated in that community as untouchables because one of their family members crucified so crucifixion was the most painful and the cruel death punishment the other death punishments as we know hanging somebody to death in our modern time they put such a criminal on an electric chair and they switch on the electricity in few moments because of the electric shock the person dies and also death punishment by giving poison they made that uh, criminal to drink poison to death in some places in europe they burned alive that person many christians were also burnt alive and in the days of uh, daniel they cast people into the fiery furnace to burn them to death also in the days of prophet daniel they cast them into the lions den or they cast those uh, criminals to the tigers and lions to be eaten is different forms of death punishment in some cold places they tie their legs and hands and cast that person into the cold and icy river to be frozen to death but among different forms of death punishment crucifixion was the most cruel most painful because they were hanging on the cross for several days and also road side they have crucified that person naked but jesus chose that in order to save us come to isaiah 53 verse 7 8 and 9 he talks about that he was oppressed and afflicted for our sin he was brought as a sheep for the slaughter when the sheep is brought when a lamb is brought to be slaughtered to be killed that innocent lamb that innocent sheep cannot speak human words but crying making noise while they're cutting the throat it's a crying and dying but the butcher without any mercy cuts the throat kills takes out the skin and cuts its flesh and sells o oh, people happily they buy that mutton bring and eat and enjoy but for their enjoyment an innocent sheep lost its life likewise Jesus is compared as that lamb of god you remember john the baptist when jesus was coming to take baptism in jordan river what did he say behold 
behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. Jesus is that Lamb of God. So he was brought as a sheep for the slaughter. But he did not open his mouth. He did not curse anyone. He did not uh, scold anyone. He did not ask, why are you doing this one? Just like that sheep, innocent sheep, he gave his life in order to save us. That's why Isaiah 53 chapter is an amazing prophecy foretold 700 years before his suffering and death on the cross of Calvary. Isaiah chapter 53 verse uh, 10 to 12 also talks about his place as an exalted person. Especially verse 11. Isaiah 53 verse 11. I wanted to focus this one. Which says, My righteous servant shall justify many. My righteous servant. Who is that righteous servant? Only Jesus. Who is righteous? Only Jesus is righteous. All the other human beings are sinful. That's why we are told in Romans chapter 3 verse 23. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Only one person on this earth. That was Jesus who was righteous. And he justifies many. And because he bore the sins of the people. He bore the sins of the people. Isaiah 52 verse 13 to 53. Which is that poem or the song about the suffering. Verse 13, Isaiah 53 verse 13 talks about the exalted position of Jesus in heaven. He's the creator, he's the sustainer, he's the redeemer, he's the king of kings and lord of lords. And always angels are now singing that holy, holy, holy to praise him. Such a, an exalted person came to this world, born as a poor person in the animal shed. He had no place to lie down his uh, head, no place of his own. He suffered the most, not only on the cross, but throughout his lifetime, he lived a, a life of suffering. And his uh, countenance, his face was marred because of the cross. And he was crucified. All of us know the suffering of Job on this earth. Job, an innocent person, suffered the most, lost everything. In one day, including seven sons and three daughters and all of his property, he lost his health and he was scratching himself with a piece of pot. He suffered so much, innocent person. Likewise, Jesus also innocent person. He also suffered the most. That's why often we call Job as a type of Christ in the Old Testament. Both suffered. But Job did not give up his faith. What did he say? In the midst of all of that suffering, what did he say? Job chapter 1 verse 21 and 22. Naked I came, naked I go back. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. Let the name of the Lord be praised. These are the words of uh, Job. He did not even question. He accepted that suffering in faith, not knowing who brought the suffering. He did not know those days. By God's grace, now we understand that was the work of Satan. But he did not know that in those days. The suffering which we go through now because of coronavirus, because of any other problem, whatever the suffering you are going through, my brother and my sister in Christ, we may not understand on this earth why we go through this suffering. Yes, personally, I am going through so much suffering. As all of you know, my wife uh, slept in the Lord seven months ago. And all the other challenges of life, being a blind person. I don't have an explanation on this earth. Why? But surely, in the light of the book of Job, we understand we are in great controversy. The struggle between good and bad. The struggle between Christ and Satan. And we, the faithful followers, are also caught up in this great controversy. We go through that suffering. But continue to have faith. Though we don't understand why the suffering comes. Why we have to go through tough time. Why? Maybe any member of our family also slept in the Lord because of coronavirus. We don't know. 
now. But soon when we go to heaven, all of those mysteries will be revealed to us. But continue in faith, like Job. What happened in the final analysis to Job? Job received a double blessing. What happened to Jesus in the final analysis? He died and resurrected and went to heaven. And where he is now? He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, right hand of the majesty. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1. Yes, suffering is a stepping stone for success. Suffering on this earth, suffering in this life is a stepping stone for exalted position for each one of us in heaven. That's why my brothers and sisters, let us not back away. Let us not run away from the suffering. Rather, face suffering boldly like Job, like Jesus. That's what we, we learn. That's why we will be taken to heaven. What a blessing we are going to have in heaven. Because that, that suffering, how long do we suffer? Is that suffering forever? No. Maybe those few years of our life. How long? Maybe that 50 years or 60 years or 70 years. After that, if you remain faithful like Job, what is next? Throughout the eternity, the ceaseless ages of eternity, we are going to have that heavenly bliss. We are going to enjoy that eternal life. That's why suffering is a step for the success. Another aspect which we need to consider is that the unreachable, the unreachable. We are told in Isaiah 53 verse 6, that God laid on him our sins, so we are unreachable. We are unreachable. Because God put all of our sin upon Jesus. That's why those people, according to the records available, people were suffering, hanging on the cross for five, six days. But Jesus died within three hours. Why? All the sin, all the burden of sin of this entire world is put upon him. That's why Jesus died in three hours of a broken heart because of the weight of the sin. Not because of the nails and the cross and the crown of thorns. If it is that, it would have uh, pulled him for uh, at least two, three days. But because of the, all the weight of the sin of the entire world was upon him, put upon him. Isaiah 53 verse 6. All of our sin is laid upon him. And he died. And we are told in Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 23. That anybody who hangs on the tree is a cursed person. Jesus is considered as a cursed person by the people in those days thinking that he was hanging on the cross. But he became a curse for whom? For you and me, each one of us. He became a curse. We are supposed to die. We are supposed to bear that punishment. We, need, we are supposed to go through that suffering because of our individual sin throughout our lifetime. But Jesus took upon himself the burden of sin, the punishment of sin, the divine judgment he bore for you and me. That's why we are told in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10, 11, and 12, if you notice, and it tells us the life of Jesus is an offering of sacrifice for our sin. It's like a an offering of sacrifice for our sins. And also, all of those deliberate sins, what we have committed. Isaiah 53 verse 7, he says, he was led like a sheep, as we said, to the slaughter. We are told in Romans chapter 5 verse 8, Romans 5 8, while we are Yet sinners, while we are still sinners, Jesus died for us. 
Not that after we became uh, good. No. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. For what? To save us. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, which says, He became a human being in order to taste the death for us. He became a human being. If Jesus come to this world, in his divine form, if Jesus comes to this world, at his first coming, in his divine form, then in his divinity, in his divine form, he could not make that uh, sacrifice. He could not die. He cannot die. Or had Jesus come to this world as an angel, again, angel cannot die. So in order to die, as a lamb of God, as our sacrifice, Jesus took the form of a human being, form of a servant. So the secret behind his incarnation is to die for us as the Lamb of God. You can read this one in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. He took the flesh like our flesh, blood like our blood, and he became like one of our brothers in order to die. In order to die. But what is going to accomplish? What he, he is going to gain by dying on the cross? That most painful and uh, cruel uh, uh, death? In order to lead many to salvation. In order to me, lead many. Lead many sons, it says. Not only sons, daughters also. Male and female. Whosoever believes in him. This is uh, John 3.16. For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son, so that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. In order to give everlasting life to many of us, many human beings, Jesus died. So that He became a captain for their salvation. He's the, he's the captain of our salvation. It's because of Jesus' death on the cross, we have that salvation free free to each one of us that's why isaiah chapter 53 is presenting jesus christ the suffering saint who suffered for us as that memory text which we read he was wounded for our transgression that is for our sins and the chastisement of our peace was upon him because he took our punishment. We have the peace with God. And with the stripes, we are healed. With the stripes which he received, we are healed. Spiritual healing, physical healing also. That's why Jesus' suffering is a blessing in disguise for each one of us. Without the suffering and the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, there is no possibility for any one of us to be saved. There is no possibility for any one of us to step into heaven. There is no chance for any one of us to enter into eternal life. There is no chance. But because of Jesus and his sacrifice, we can come to his throne of grace boldly. Jesus is coming soon to take us to heaven. Only we have that opportunity to be taken to heaven because of the suffering and the death of Jesus. This is what is unthinkable act, unthinkable deed on the part of the Creator. Why did He do all of that? Because of His agape love. What is agape love? A love which has no selfishness. A love which is not doing something, expecting something in return. Not at all. Agape love is self-sacrificing love without any expectation, without any return 
without any advantage just only doing it for the sake of helping someone this is agape love and also his special grace is saving grace by grace by his grace we are saved by faith ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 he showed that abundant grace to us though we are sinners still while we are still sinners he came to die for us may the lord help each one of us to grasp this important supreme sacrifice which he made for us without which we have no hope have no scope for salvation that's why the christian world at present is remembering the suffering of Jesus Christ. They call this one Lent season, 40 days, some of them even fasting whole day, night time they eat. Some of them eat only one meal during the afternoon, then the rest of the day they don't eat anything. They are fasting, which is good, but it is not uh, recommended anywhere in the Bible. If they are doing it, it's good a good spiritual experience but if they're doing it only for namesake kind of a, a yearly ritual others are doing we have to do it then there's no use of it because you read in uh, matthew chapter 26 that few days before the crucifixion of jesus jesus and his disciples participated in a banquet hosted by Simon in Bethany. So Jesus and his disciples were in a feast just only a few days, few days before his death. But today Christian world says this is a Lent season. It is uh, now imposed by the church, the Roman church in those days, and which is now spreading into many other Protestant denominations also. But it is not only once in a year, 40 days, we have to remember the suffering and uh, death of Jesus. We need to remember each day. If we can remember, if we can meditate at least a few moments each day, how Jesus suffered on the cross, how Jesus bore our sin, how Jesus made that supreme sacrifice of shedding his blood, giving his life to save us, few moments each day. I tell you, our spiritual experience is going to be so much enriched. Our spiritual experience is going to grow day by day. If only we can focus on his suffering and death each day, not only these 40 days, what they call uh, 40 days of Lent season. No. Remember each day of our life, every day throughout the uh, year, every day of our life, if we can meditate on the closing scenes of Jesus' suffering, Jesus' life, and Jesus' death, Jesus' resurrection, if we can focus on that, what a great spiritual blessing we are going to gain. Along with that, also remember the world is coming to an end. We are in the ending of the end time. Jesus is coming sooner than what we are expecting. That's why suffering and the sacrifice leads to success. Are you worried about the suffering which is surrounding us because of coronavirus? Are you worried about uh, the suffering which is to come upon God's people in this ending of the end time, which we call persecution all over the world. We cannot buy, we cannot sell. Yes, those days are uh, not far away. Those days are coming sooner. That's why my fellow pilgrims to heaven. Let us not give up our hope. Continue to trust in Jesus. Have faith in his salvation. And in order to grant us this great salvation, he suffered on the cross of Calvary. That's what is the focus of Isaiah chapter 53.
and such with a great sacrifice, which is supreme sacrifice, unthinkable act. He saved us. He bought us. That's why First Peter chapter one was eighteen and nineteen. He did not redeem us. He did not buy us with a gold or silver. He bought us with his precious blood. He redeemed us with his precious blood. That's why we are grateful. It's because of his sacrifice we have that hope for eternity. May the Lord bless each one of us so that we may cherish his supreme sacrifice each day of our life. Try this one each day whenever you have time. Maybe in the morning when you wake up or before you go to bed or sometime in the afternoon whenever you have some little leisure time, free time. Take few minutes, few moments to think of his supreme sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Because of that supreme sacrifice, unthinkable sacrifice, we have salvation freely available. But on our part, we have to accept it with all the humility in faith. We have to accept it. Then, we will inherit that salvation. Salvation is free. But on our part, what we have to do is accepting that freely offered salvation by faith so that we can be saved. If it is that your desire, you join with me. We want to pray in conclusion. Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you so much for your love and your grace because of Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. We are here to remember that supreme sacrifice, unthinkable. We cannot think why the Savior came to this world. It's because of your agape love and your special grace. Because of your infinite love and mercy, you came to this world, took the form of a, a servant and made that supreme sacrifice which even our own family members cannot make any sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to live as your sons and daughters faithfully to bring glory and honor to you. Lord, come soon and take us home. Till you come back, let your peace and protection and blessing be upon us as we are frightened again of coronavirus rising in many places. Lord, take care of us. Take care of all of our spiritual and physical needs for your glory and honor. Thank you, Lord, because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Please uh, share our YouTube channel with others who are not yet uh, acquainted with this, which is absolutely free. They can also subscribe. Please uh, pray for me and my daughter for this ministry to continue. And also share these thoughts with others so that they can also be blessed. And if it is God's willing, let's uh, meet next week again in the 11th lesson study. Until that time, God's peace and protection and blessing be upon each one of us. God bless you.